Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about Nintendo Direct. There has been a rumored uh, Nintendo Direct coming next month. Uh, it could be as soon as two weeks from now, or yeah, probably two weeks from now, if not three weeks. Uh, but yeah, it, it's something that seems to be coming, and setting rumors aside, we've essentially gotten a Nintendo Direct every single September except one, and that was last year during a pandemic when we didn't really get any real directs. Uh, but we've gotten one every September, essentially, since Nintendo Directs were founded. Uh, and yeah, th th there's some stuff I want to talk about that we could be getting uh, in this direct. Things we should expect to get, things that we um, are likely or could um, expect that are new announcements, and then some things that I think are announcements that we're going to get someday, but might be more unlikely to happen in this direct. And then we'll, we'll go over what games, obviously, that have been in prior directs and prior things that we can expect to see today or in this next direct, uh, and then ones that we might not see now, but we'll see again in the future in 2022. But before we get into what you should expect out of this Direct, let's remind you that we're giving away a Switch OLED. That's right, all you gotta do is be subscribed to the channel to enter and we'll announce the winner during a live stream in early October. I also want to implore all of you guys, if you enjoy this video, to drop a like and comment. That does help us out with the YouTube algorithm. And yeah, you know, if you are really enjoying this stuff, why not hit the bell icon as well so you're notified on more of my videos and live streams. I'd say all of them, but we all know the notification system on YouTube doesn't always work. All right, so I don't think, uh, you know, let, let's get some of the obvious, I, I guess, out of the way. I got, I got a couple pages of notes here, and the obvious is obvious. We're going to get updates pretty much on all of the games coming the rest of this year that have already been announced. So things like WarioWare, right? Like, you know, that, that game's coming in early September. I, if that game's not already out before the Direct, um, or, you know, whatever, if the Direct's after it comes out, it doesn't really matter. I think they're going to advertise the game either way. Um, I also think we're going to get updates, obviously, for Metroid Dread. We've been getting little trickle updates and trailers along the way. Getting another update wouldn't be shocking here, although it's possible maybe they don't talk about it because they've been actually giving consistent updates on it. So, But but it being there wouldn't be a surprise. It's kind of expected. Um, Shin Megami Tensei Five. I expect us to get the next big update for that game because that's one of the bigger third-party games, if not the biggest third-party game, coming to Switch the rest of the year, and it is exclusive. Um, Advance Wars one plus two reboot camp as well i expect to hear about that and any other games that have already been announced i, I think that's just the obvious is obvious we're going to get updates on those games uh the question is what are we going to get beyond that because that's like expected right now getting into the rest of the nintendo direct we have to remember that nintendo directs are essentially nintendo fan christmas that we get multiple times a year and just like some Christmases when you're a kid, sometimes you're a little bit disappointed in maybe what you're given, uh, even though we should always be appreciative of anything that we're given because we're not, we, we really shouldn't have those kind of expectations. We all know as kids that we have expectations at Christmas time. Uh, if you're someone that celebrates that and, you know, as, as gamers, we have expectations of these events. So sometimes the events end up disappointing. Sometimes the events end up really, really exciting and it's everything we wanted it to be. For me, Breath of the Wild 2 was all I needed out of the last major event like this. So it's one of those situations where we don't really know what sort of direct this is going to be except for advertising current games, but there's always something new typically in these directs. And I want to get into some expectations. The first one obviously being um, some sort of update for Nintendo Switch Online. This has happened at the previous two uh, Nintendo Directs that we've had in September. We got updates to, we got the NES app and plus the entire launch of the Nintendo Switch Online service anyways. Uh, and then obviously the SNES app. I, I expect some sort of update like that. I talked about that uh, during a live stream last night that I do expect some sort of update to Nintendo Switch Online, whatever that update is, I don't know what, but something that they're going to want to talk about during this Direct, I fully expect that to be a thing. Now, setting that aside, I don't think that's going to be like the big surprise in the Direct, although it could be, especially if it's like N64 games being added. I do think we're going to obviously see some new games. So let's talk about some of the, beyond the obvious, is obvious games coming this year, what are some things we could expect? Well, there's been rumors circulating about a new Fire Emblem game made by Intelligent Systems, maybe even assisted again by Koei Tecmo, because they did help with, um, you know, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Uh, that there's something in the works there. Now, Intelligent Systems is also the company, or the studio, I should say, that's making the new WarioWare game. But I think we can all agree that WarioWare game likely didn't use the full 
uh, studio for that. So chances are a majority of the team is likely working on this new Fire Emblem game. And traditionally, at least based on what they did on 3DS, it's like every few years or so we get one. Now, this is Switch. It is a different situation. We might not get a Fire Emblem every few years. And we don't even know if this is going to be a remake or if it's going to be a whole new game. Or maybe it's something that follows up Three Houses directly. Uh, but there is obviously something in the works. And I think... I can speak for many people where I actually really loved Fire Emblem Three Houses. I know not everyone was into the school aspect, and if it's a remake, it's going to be you know whatever that old game did, or if it's a new game, it'll have some new uh, you know quirk to it or some new direction. But I will note that I think one thing we can all sort of agree is that Switch is more capable of better visuals in Fire Emblem than we got in Three Houses. So I feel like now that we're deeper into the generation, that we should maybe expect a bit more from the presentation of the game. That visually, while the character models were great, the environments necessarily weren't. I, I want to see the environments kind of taken to that next level. Switch is more capable than what we saw in Three Houses. And as, so, yeah, Fire Emblem Three Houses also sold really, really well. So when a game sells really, really well, Nintendo has a tendency to make more of them. So I would say... There's a chance that we could actually legitimately see Fire Emblem revealed in this. Now, I don't think Fire Emblem, uh, a new Fire Emblem or a port or, uh, or a remaster would be something that's going to get announced in this direct to come this year. It could be something for next year. Um, but well, it's one of those things where they could tease a new Fire Emblem. And it wouldn't necessarily be surprising because we've kind of heard some rumors about it for a little while. Now... Another game that we can't really be shocked if we see is Xenoblade Chronicles 3. We had massive rumors coming out, primarily from Imran Khan. I know there was the voice actress as well, um, but really Imran Khan's the one that basically told us, yeah, this game's like done, or almost done, uh, and yeah, I, it... It's not going to come this year. I, I want to throw that caveat out there. I don't expect Xenoblade Chronicles 3 this year, but to get announced... Yeah, I think this has a chance to be an early 2022 title. So if you got Legends Arceus in uh, January, this could be a February, March, or April game. Now, it is possible that they do push Xenoblade Chronicles 3 up sooner and actually release it in December, doubling up because um, you know, Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp comes out in early December. They could release this in mid to late December, although with the holidays, I, I would suspect they would do middle of December. And we saw with games like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate that releasing in that month isn't like you're sending the game out to die. It's actually a really good chance to to not let Xenoblade Chronicles 3 get overshadowed by some of the massive games coming out in 2022. So, again, this is something that I at least expect to see. As for what I expect to see, I, I mean, I don't know. That, that, that's getting into a whole speculation over what this game's going to be. You know, I think they're going to, you know, with the, after that future connected DLC from Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, some combination of all the worlds taking place way in the future, uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens, but I do expect it to be much more visually pleasing than Xenoblade Chronicles 2 because we even saw with the DLC and then Definitive Edition that the visuals kept getting better. So I expect Xenoblade Chronicles 3 to be the best looking Xenoblade Chronicles game to date, uh, but we'll have to see if they make any other fundamental changes as well. Uh, now, another game that's been announced and we, we've known about for a long time is Bayonetta 3. So I'm not sure if we're going to see Bayonetta 3 at this Direct, although I do think it's possible we do finally see it with a teaser for 2022 and it being like a summer release to kind of pair up with Splatoon 3, which I firmly believe will be a summer release. But I, again, we don't really know if we're going to see Bayonetta 3 here. It's possible that is a game that's held back to be revealed at the Game Awards because it was initially announced at the Game Awards and then Nintendo might feel Bayonetta 3 really fits in pushing to that more general gamer audience. Uh, but this is something that I it, we could see at this threat. I do think the game is pretty far along. Um, it definitely feels like Platinum Games is just like waiting for Nintendo to give the green light to show it. Uh, so, I, yeah, this feels like a game that's probably slated for 2022 in my opinion. Uh, so having that uh, at this next Direct, I, I, I think... Wouldn't be a surprise. I don't know if you should expect it because it's possible it's a game award reveal, but it is something that we might see before the end of this year. So again, that is an option for this direct that we might see. Um, next up, I, I do think expect this, and this isn't a new reveal. This is just an update on a game that's already coming in 2022, and I expect to see an update for Project Triangle Strategy. I think it just makes sense at this point to give us another update for that game coming from Square Enix. While it's going to be on other platforms too and all that, reality is obviously they unveiled it trying to take advantage of that Octopath Traveler hype, although it's not technically 
a sequel to Optimat Traveler. It's its own thing. So we'll have to wait and see uh, what they show of it. But I do actually expect that game to be there. Uh, it, it's something that's not going to take up a lot of time. Uh, and it's Nintendo showing uh, support for their third-party partners. And Square Enix is one of the big ones. So, yeah, I expect that to get some airtime at this next Direct. As just a reminder to people that that game is still coming. Now... There's some things I wouldn't expect. And there are some more wild cards, by the way. We're going to get some wild cards towards the end. But there are some things that I wouldn't expect. Things like Metroid Prime 4. There's multiple reasons I don't expect Metroid Prime 4. One, I'm not even sure if we're getting Metroid Prime 4 next year. And two, we have Metroid Dread coming. And I don't think they're going to want to overshadow Metroid Dread with a Prime 4 announcement. Now, if you want to believe we're getting a Prime 4 announcement soon, one thing to consider is you know, when they announced Metroid Dread, they said they need a little bit more time um with metro prime 4 before they could show it and last we heard something like that was when ag Anomo said we need a little bit more time for breath of the wild 2 earlier this year and then we got the trailer at e3 so you can argue there's hope i think there's more hope for the spring uh direct next year which nintendo traditionally has to see a uh, or a reveal at that if it is going to be a 2022 game. I still kind of get this feeling that it's probably a 2023, but we'll have to wait and see. I personally, though, would say, hey, Metroid Dread, they're not going to do anything to overshadow that. So a Prime Trilogy HD, a Prime 4, not something I expect them to even mention this year. Now, another game that I wouldn't expect to see is, well, Sparks of Hope. And it's not because we're not going to get new information on the game soon. So Mario Plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope is actually up for an award at Gamescom this year. So actually, in reality, we are going to get an update on, that, on this game very soon. Uh, but because of that, that's why I don't expect to actually see it at the Direct. Um, it's just something that it doesn't feel like it needs the Direct. It's going to be at Gamescom. We're going to get a bunch of new information there. And if we do get a bunch of new information and even a demo that's played by the media, then I would actually suspect this is an early first half of next year game. So yeah, they could put it as a reminder in the Direct, but I, it, it kind of feels like they didn't need to since they're going to show up this month at Gamescom. So uh, they kind of lets the Direct off the hook, I think, for that game. Now these next ones are what I like to call wild cards. Uh, they're ones that you could actually maybe even expect. You could say, I'm going to explain why I don't expect them, but... Um, yeah, let's talk about why why I think you shouldn't expect these ones, but it's not entirely shocking if they show up. But unlike the other ones I mentioned, I feel like those are more likely. These ones I think are less likely, but do actually exist. A Donkey Kong. So there's been a rumored Donkey Kong game in development for a while. Uh, it's been rumored for months. It's still been rumored even after E3 because the rumors didn't say it was even going to be at E3. Uh, and the rumors have it that it's really close to completion. It is the 40th anniversary of Donkey Kong. You know, that's a really strong reason for it to get revealed now. I also think they don't want Donkey Kong to be revealed right now. I think they're going to wait for 2022. I feel like it's going to end up being another summer game for a, a three-pack of summer games. You know, for June, July, and August. I think all three are going to have big games. With Splatoon 3, um, Bayonetta 3, and then Donkey Kong. I think that's going to be Nintendo's summer plans next year. So I feel like they're going to wait to unveil DK until the next Direct in spring. And then really push it from there. But I could be wrong on that front. It's possible they reveal it now. I just kind of feel like they're going to keep that, that one in the chamber uh, and wait and, and, and give us a reveal in spring of next year. Um, Kirby. Now, Kirby is a wild card in pretty much any late-in-the-year direct when there hasn't been a Kirby game already announced because we get a Kirby something every year, some sort of eShop game, mainline game, spin-off game. We get some sort of Kirby game every year, right? And we even got one last year. We got a little eShop game, Kirby Fighters, right? So we, we get Kirby games. We don't have one yet this year. The developers have said they're making a new Kirby game. They're making a Kirby game that's supposedly the best Kirby game of all time, at least according to them. At least the ambition for it is that. But because of that, I feel like if there's only a single Kirby game in the works right now, which by the way, there were rumors at one point there were multiple Kirby games. But if there's only one Kirby game in the works at the moment, and they're trying to make it the best Kirby game ever made, I got a feeling they're going to take it that extra year of development. There was obviously COVID that probably made development go slower than usual anyways. So I feel like they're going to take an extra year of development on it. And it's possible that it's something they're looking to release in fall of next year as a fall release. Uh, so I feel like it's something to be revealed next year 
rather than this year. Now, I could be wrong, and it could be some surprise game, and they decide to drop it and pack it into October or something. I have no idea. They do do that with Kirby games sometimes. Sometimes they give you really short announce, announcement to release. Uh, but I feel like if it is the mainline Kirby games, and this is going to be like the next evolutionary step, the next big ambitious one, which we haven't really had in a while, then sure, um, take take a little bit of extra time. I think they're, they're I think they're gonna take a, a smidge of, of time with this one to try to meet their ambitious vision. Now, um, another wild card, and this is a wild card in any direct really for like the last how many years? Three years is a new Smash character reveal, right? So we know there's one more Smash character reveal left, and then supposedly that's it. Sakurai's done. They're done adding new characters. doesn't mean they're done updating the game or adding new spirit events or maybe adding new stages or adding, like, updates to... Or, like, the little side characters with the Mii costumes and stuff. They might still do more of that. I don't know. But when it comes to adding full new characters to the roster... They're supposedly done, and Sakurai's been pretty consistent on that. Nintendo's been pretty consistent on that. This is it. There's not a DLC of uh, Fighter Pack 3 coming, at least not this generation. Maybe if this game gets ported to, like, Nintendo's next generation system, then they decide to do extra DLC for it and keep it going. Uh, but for right now, there's nothing planned. Because uh, I do feel like Ultimate's a game that's going to span multiple generations, meaning we won't get a new Smash game next generation. I feel like they're just going to port Ultimate over and then maybe add DLC to it. We'll see on that front. I mean, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe looks like that might be it for Mario Kart this generation. That's not a new game. So we'll see what happens. I feel like they're going to do something similar with Smash. That being said, that being said, it's always possible we get a Smash character reveal. And Sakurai did throw up this tweet uh, that looks like he's potentially teasing something, right? So it's a reference originally back to Terminator 2. Uh, so I, I don't need to go over the whole of that, but it, it's a movie reference technically that's been redone many times over again in video games. So several video games have referenced this Terminator 2 thumb, uh, you know, you know, thumb up as it sinks down into the lava, right? Fortnite has done it. Doom has done it. Uh, Among Us has done it. Like there's the, the game list that have done it is a lot. So it makes people start speculating, are we getting a Fortnite character in here? Are we getting Doom guy in here? Are we getting this? Are we getting that? It's leading to all this speculation. And honestly, we don't know why Sakurai posted this. Um, it, maybe he just happened to be watching Terminator 2, so he threw so he threw up the image. Granted, this image isn't actually the one from Terminator 2, but it's obviously the reference image. So well, I, I'm not really sure. It could mean absolutely nothing. And I think there's basically 50% of people that saw this tweet think it means nothing. The other 50% means something. I have no idea. Um, only Sakurai and the team behind Smash know. So uh, there could be a Smash character reveal. But the reason I call it a wild card is I think they're going to want to drag it out. I think Nintendo's going to drag this in to early next year. I, I, I think... They want to find a way to keep Smash relevant heading into 2022 or at the beginning of 2022. And a way to keep it relevant is obviously having a big character reveal at the beginning of 2022. I actually think February, I don't even know if they'll wait for a direct. I, I think there's going to be a Smash character reveal in February of next year. Uh, so I think they're just going to push it in 2022. We have seen early in the year character reveals before. We've also seen late in the year ones as well. But I, I think they're going to hold back just a bit and wait for February to kind of get it rolling, which yes, does make 2022 just even more jam-packed, but I think we already knew 2022 was going to be pretty jam-packed, especially if a game like Breath of the Wild 2 isn't delayed outside of it. I do think with the number of releases that I'm expecting in 2022, they can delay Breath of the Wild to 2023 and be fine, especially if it's early 2023, but we'll see what happens. I'm hoping that every game slated for 2022 actually comes there. So do, here's the thing. If all these things happen, of course, this will be the, like one of the greatest directs of all time, right? So don't expect to get all, like, don't expect to get Fire Emblem, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Bayonetta 3, and Kirby, and Donkey Kong, and a Smash, like, you're not getting all of that. Pick one or two, out of that bunch, and that's what you should get. The thing is, I'm just trying to say, I feel like Band out of three, which could be a game game awards thing. So then you could argue the Fire Emblem game and maybe Xenoblade Chronicles three. Those could be two big reveals. It could just be one of those games, especially if it's a 2022 game. So again, these are just my expectations. I'm not expecting us to get all of this. I want to be clear, we're not getting all of this, but I do expect us to get some of that. Now, some might ask, what about Splatoon three, Nate? Ah, you know, I I I just. 
I don't think we're seeing Splatoon 3 again until next year. I think it's a summer game. I think starting in January, we'll get a teaser, a commercial, or something. And they'll really start pushing that game next year. I just think they're going to hold off on Splatoon 3 for right now. They already unveiled the game. Um, I, I just feel like they're not going to start pushing it until next year. I could be wrong on that front. And you, and if they show Splatoon 3, I guess it wouldn't be surprising. But that, that falls in my category of I don't really expect it. So maybe a wild card showing us Splatoon 3. But I don't really expect that. So anyways, you guys let me know. These are my expectations. Again, take two of the three of Bayonetta 3. I think between Bayonetta 3, uh, Fire Emblem, and Xenoblade Chronicles, at least one of those things will happen, if not two. The rest is just going to be stuff that's already announced and likely coming this year. So that, I, at least that's my opinion. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Let me know what you think is going to happen in this fabled, this rumored, this expected September 2021 Nintendo Direct. I am Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime, and I will catch you guys all in the next video.